Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the Lakeside Shopping Centre. Johnny, a little bit of a step up from Stiffer Clay's social club, isn't it? Just a little one. Bit gutted I ain't got my boxing ring here, but uh, what can you do? Next time, bigger and better. It's like the first show when the uh, Eddie D's, they didn't come on, did they? Do you remember that? But then uh, I couldn't settle until we'd done a show again and put the Eddie D's on, so it'll be the same here. Next time you see a ring here and doing a, a full media workout. Talk about levels, is this the kind of step up? I remember your first one while you was uh, doing it in your two before uh, office. No disrespect to that, but slow moves and then here we're at the kind of centrepiece of Lakeside Shopping Centre. Yeah, well, that little office, a lot of magic happens in there, thanks to Smith and the boys. But, um, yeah, it is all about stepping up. We're in year two now, so like any business, you want to improve each year and... Uh, I can do all this, but what I need is the boys all around me, they need to improve, the fights need to get better. And we are obviously fourth best fight in uh, Britain, voted by Boxing News. So we're getting where we want to be and the boxers are believing in me. And I think this little step up, they deserve things like this for them. Yeah, well, we'll get on to that little Boxing News mention very soon. But before we talk about chaos, just a quick recap of 2023. Year one as a boxing promoter, four shows uh, four incredibly successful shows but I'm sure you'll agree bit of a roller coaster up and down but in your own words how would you assess your first year migraines <laughs> honestly it, it's been the hardest thing I've ever done the most I've ever worked and the least I've been paid that's the truth of it it's, you, you can't come into small hall and expect to get money you know without the sponsors I would be on my ass right now you know every show is either you break even or you make a loss um, but from each show, what I've gained, it's been crazy, you know, and every show stepping up and like we're going towards to get a TV deal, I mean, that's what I want. Like Small Hall needs to be on the TV and I need to put it there. You know, I know you've got all the, everyone saying, you're not a Small Hall promoter, you, you, you're very organised, you're this or that. Well, I want to stay in this lane and I want to make it the best I can be and doing things like this, like I deserve... Um, TV back in, I believe, so I can just relax a little bit more. I'm not doing it to make the money yet either. I know the only reason I want proper back in is so I can relax and put on better fights. Were you shocked how hard it's actually been? No. no. <laughs> I see Lee Eaton sweating, running around the venues, and he does sweat when he runs. I don't know if you've seen that. But I've seen... You're like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're looking well. New haircut and all that. But I, um, I knew how hard it was. But the thing I didn't realise is it is 24-7. You know, you wake up to a message that you've got, what you've got to imagine is boxers and trainers and managers, they're in gyms with pads in their hands or gloves. They can only text you a certain time. So the phone never stops. It never stops. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not taking me by surprise. And I think owning businesses and being a dad has helped me to be a better promoter as well. Coogan asks Eddie this in his review, so I'm going to ask you the same. Rate your year one out of ten. Year one out of ten, I got on Sky. Um, I, I really feel like I'm established myself as a promoter. I mean, Lakeside Shopping Centre. I say out of ten, I'm going to give myself a nine. This year going to be a ten. That's what we're going to go for. Let's move on to it then. Chaos, the red and black theme. So I like it. It looks violent, mate. Um, already some mishaps, but first of all, we'll just uh, run through the top of the card. There's some uh, big title fights, isn't there? Yeah, well, obviously, we've got the Super Bantam English title on it. Hopefully, that goes ahead. You know what it's like. <laughs> um, but, yeah, listen, two great lads. Good fight, the last one. Um, glad to have it on my show. I was actually approached by Andre Garnstein to put it on, and I couldn't think of a better place for him to be on. You know, I watched the last fight. It was in a leisure centre. It reminded me of my old PE hall, if I'm being honest. They deserve, if they're fighting for an English title, to have a little bit of love. Uh, events like this and push forward and hopefully gain a little bit more following and then maybe Boxing News will write about one of their fights. You know what I mean? Jordan Perkis announces yesterday that he has retired from the sport. Um, obviously, we all know what happened on that show earlier on last year. Shock to you? Obviously, he was announced on that poster. We all thought he'd be here today, the comeback, and now, uh, unfortunately for him, and obviously... Best wishes to him, but he has decided to retire from the sport. 
Yeah, I'm gutted. As a promoter, tiny bit upset because if he had done that Monday, then I could have had maybe Amy Andrews who might be coming on. She could have been there getting all the love and the attention uh, to help her sell tickets. But as a friend, I'm devastated for him. I know he wrote about mental health on there, so I don't want to say anything too much on here over the top, but I, I wish him well and I think he should come back. I'm going to be honest, I think he's good enough to work and fight journeyman to get his record back up and to learn. But if he's doing this for family and, and after boxing reasons and fair play to him, it's a tough sport with not a lot of money in it. I know, as you said earlier, nothing shocked you in boxing, but it was, it was a little bit of a shock to hear that little tweet last night. And uh, speaking to you, you didn't find out much earlier, did you? No, I found out at the same time. So, and I was, like I said, I was devastated. I could have prepared and, and replaced him. But listen, I do, I do wish him well because like, the story was his my next door neighbour, you know, and then we got him to fight for an English title on my second show. And I really wanted to make amends to that. And then the next show, he got injured, broke his foot. And this show, he's fucking retired. So I don't know if I'm a, a bit of bad luck for him <laughs> or whatnot, but I really want to make that right. So if you do come back, Jordan, let's do it on my show. You know what I mean? Get your head right, get, get your finances straight, and then hopefully I can get you back out there, mate, and uh, put you on winning ways. We've got two fighters either side of us uh, here that fight each other, Finley Judd and... Yeah, we haven't had no kickoffs now, unfortunately, for me. But, um, yeah, we've got Finley Judd and Kevin Ravel. It wouldn't be a top-tier show without a domestic super welterweight fight, would it? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it seems to be the division that we uh, get the most people going to have 50-50s in. There's many of them that shy away from it, and uh, Finley's been out of the ring for two years, it would have been by the time he steps back in. And, you know, Kev is always in my ring, isn't he? <laughs> not like that, you dirty cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me, mate. I was waiting for you to say it. But, listen, they're fucking, they're good boys. They're up for a fight. Thomas Galbraith's still here trying to pick fights with everyone, but he's not going to get it. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's what we want. We want good fighters to come on, 50-50s, come in here, do their media stuff, sell their tickets, and, and, and these boys already do. You know what I mean? They're, they're ticking all the boxes, and I hope, like, they're one fight away from a southern area, aren't they? Someone who I've been really impressed with, and I said this, certainly from a media perspective, is Brandon Ulrichs. Last year, even when he weren't fighting, he was going to matchroom events, making his face known, and from the business side, I know you know that's massive, and that's why you're doing these big media events. So good to have Brandon on this show, but he's now got to kind of kick up the arse with the media side and with his status as a fighter. Yeah, it's, it's what we're about as a brand. We're trying to, when we build, we need to build people with me. So I need someone like Brandon who is a good fighter, tough fighter, very tough to match as well. People always pull out on him and they don't want to fight him because he can punch. That's all we get back. And to have someone like him come on, good sponsors, good backing, and he can fight, it's like, sweet. Let's work together, let's get you a bit of media coverage and let's push you as much as I can. And now uh, he's really took light to it. He's the first here, very polite, works the room, does the media. I think he's done about 10 interviews now, and I can see him improving each time as well. Have you got a free subscription to Fake Taxi yet? No, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, your missus has gone for food. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> She's left me. <laughs> yeah. For Fake Taxi. But um, no, we'll move on to Will Hamilton. I know he hasn't arrived yet if today, but what a support. Last time out, I know we spoke about Mark Noble being there, which was unbelievable. Um, I think uh, that's my screensaver there. So, um, yeah, but someone who's local, someone who I think everyone knows around the area and is going to sell a whole of a lot of tickets. Yeah, and he's someone I'd like, like to build. Like you said, he, he sells his tickets, he, he, he does his bit, even though he ain't here today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he does what he needs to do. And I, I'm, I'm quite glad to help him go towards what I think he deserves. As I was telling Andy, like he was asking me to you know, break down a few of the fighters in the background. I said, most people have to train to be a boxer, but Will Hamilton has to box because of the way he trains. Yeah. He's a lunatic. You know what I mean? Like him, Taylor Jordan and uh, B2 Be Human, um, they're, they're running around London before I've even got up. And I thought, fuck yeah, now like, they make me feel lazy. So then I get up, spring in my step, and then I crack on. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, it's good for him to get a good fight. He's unbeaten, the old obese to boxer. Look, he's handing that double deckers over there. But um, he's obviously had one fight and drew. He's come through a good journey himself, and it's, it's a great fight.
it's a great fight. People are telling me good things about him and telling me it's going to be a close fight. So, personally, I haven't seen him box. I've seen Will box. I've put Will as a favourite from what I've seen. But we'll see soon see what they're both made of. Today, we're here for chaos. Um, what are the chaos chaotic show is going to be this year are we going to stay in the Brentwood Centre are we going to move out what are the plans I'm going to stay there I think I made it my home um, as long as everyone's behaved in the venue and we don't get barred and shit like that then we can stay there and I really put a stamp on Essex Boxing you know Lakeside Shopping Centre um, keeping it in my home building it giving every gym around me a route to make it to one of the big boys. So, yeah, I'm going to stay there. I'm going to do five shows and keep building. Five shows this year, yeah? Yeah, five shows. This one, though, for me, um, Grant Dennis versus Ozzy Osbourne. Yes. It's a great fight, you know. Like How, how I'm looking at that is Grant's either going to look like an old man or he's going to old man Ozzy Osbourne. It's a great, great learning, seeing where each other's are because, realistically, Grant's previous records and whatever he should be okay in this fight and if Ozzy wins then it just shows you what level he's at it? You know what I mean? Does it worry you? You mentioned about potentially being barred and just keeping trouble away. Yeah. The last show was the first time where there was a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Um, it weren't bad, no. it weren't like that we've seen some massive arenas but does it worry you that you've built a home you've built a name for yourself and that reputation could go to tatters with kind of free drunken people in the crowd yeah, exactly that mate like, I don't drink you know what I mean not because I'm an asthma I used to be an asthma when I was younger but I don't drink because no good stories really happen about it when I am drunk yeah. and I know when you're at your show you've got one of your best friends fighting in a venue you're going to get a bit of feelings behind you but this time what I've done is I've wrote on the tickets I've wrote a paragraph on the back Sam listen your box is being professional in the ring I need you to be professional outside the ring yeah. because you ruin their night. Yeah. If you kick off, they're barred from my shows. I can't put them on. I have to do risk assessments for them to be on there. So it's pointless you doing that after everything they've done to get in that ring. You're here on a night enjoying yourself, and I do hope you enjoy it, but you don't have to have a scrap. You know what I mean? Yeah, de definitely. And we'll finish off on something a little bit more light, a little bit more better. But um, we did mention at the start Jack Martin versus CJ Challenger. It was announced fourth in uh, Boxing News is domestic fights of the year. I think after the fight, the night, I think nobody could really believe it. And I was telling Lewis Hart of Boxing Social the next day. Like? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, just uh, the, how good that fight was. I think he didn't really believe me until he saw that. But yeah, what a fight. And just must have been a, an honour to have one of those sort of fights. A fight that people will be talking about for a very long time. Yeah, because... On my shows, I match them as well. So I approach people, my managers, and ask if I can stick two boxes together. Obviously, they're both with Let's Go. And I asked Lee, he went, who can we get for uh, CJ? I said, Jack Martin, my first champion. He's my first Southern Area champion. Is that way, super welter, <laughs> obviously, if he's on my show. Um, and I said, oh, why don't we stick them together? And he was like, fuck it, why not? And it worked, you know. So I feel a lot of pride because I match all my, most of my fights, other than the journeyman ones. Um, to get them on there, get them over the line, it's great. And I get people like George Groves, Barry Jones, Andy Clark, Andy Drew on my shows because they go back and tell people about them. They understand. And what that does, it brings boxing news to actually see and hear and be around my shows. And now they're all singing my praises. And I know, I'm not being big at it, but I deserve that. The shows I've been putting on are quality. People are giving me 50-50 fights and they deserve to be on Boxing News and your socials being pumped out there because they're giving it a go. They're not being padded. They're actually fighting boxing and doing something in the sport and that they should be proud of that. Excellent. Johnny, thank you very much for being to IFL TV. I think we've covered about anything. Um, yeah, you having your teeth toned down this year? Yeah, I might do. Get too many horrible comments in there. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. See you soon. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook. Sign up now for a $20 free bet. Just use the code IFLTV24. Sign up now. Terms and conditions apply.